There is a question many men, especially after passing 60 or 65 years of age, ask themselves in silence. A question that sometimes feels embarrassing to discuss, even with a trusted doctor. Oh. And that question is, does what I do in my intimacy have any effect on my health? Can masturbating or having frequent sexual relations be good or bad? And more importantly, could this have anything to do with prostate cancer? Guy. Today, we're going to talk about this openly, without taboos, as if we were in my office. Because what you do in the privacy of your bedroom, that very personal part of your life, could have a direct impact on how many years you live and, above all, how you live them. Today, we are going to unveil what science truly says about ejaculation and the health of your prostate that small, walnut-sized gland, but with gigantic importance. Stay with me, because the answer will surprise you. To fully understand this topic, we must first get to know our protagonist, the prostate. Imagine it as a small factory located just below your bladder. Its main job is to produce an essential part of semen called prostatic fluid. This fluid is not just a simple filler. It's a nutritious cocktail containing zinc, citric acid, and vital enzymes to protect and transport sperm. But the prostate doesn't work alone. Their semen production is a team effort. The seminal vesicles contribute most of the volume, a sugar-rich fluid for energy. And the testicles, for their part, contribute barely 1% of the volume, but it's the most important the spermatozoa. All of this mixes to form semen. Now, how does all this come out? Ejaculation is a fascinating two-act process. First, the emission phase, where all these fluids gather in the urethra, ready to exit like actors waiting backstage. Then, with adequate stimulation, comes the second act, expulsion. IH. The pelvic floor muscles contract strongly and propel the semen outwards. This perfect ballet depends on impeccable communication between nerves and muscles. That's why conditions like diabetes or, as we will see later, certain prostate surgeries can alter this process. A recurring question in my office is, doctor, is it bad to hold back? Can accumulating semen be harmful? The direct answer is that there is no evidence that not ejaculating causes serious illness by itself. However, it's not an act without consequences. Imagine a river that doesn't flow. The water stagnates. Something similar happens in the prostate. Men suffering from chronic prostatitis, a persistent and sometimes painful inflammation of the gland. A low ejaculation frequency can worsen symptoms of pelvic congestion. In fact, a study back in 1999 observed that increasing ejaculatory frequency, whether through sexual intercourse or masturbation, helped many men relieve the symptoms of this condition it's as if ejaculating cleanses the ducts, reducing pressure and inflammation. And there's an additional benefit that many don't consider. Sleep quality. Ejaculating releases a cocktail of hormones like prolactin and oxytocin that induce relaxation in sleep. Recent research published in 2023 in the journal Sleep Disorders found that sexual activity, especially when it ended in orgasm, significantly improved both sleep onset and quality. So, beyond pleasure, an active sex life can be your best natural sleep aid. But now let's get to the point I know many are waiting for, the one that generates the most doubts and fears. Does infrequent ejaculation increase the risk of prostate cancer? Or, put another way, does ejaculating more protect you? Science has been asking this question for decades. And the findings are, to say the least, very striking. Allow me to take a sip of water, and, in the meantime, I ask you for a small gesture that helps me enormously. If this information seems valuable to you, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. It's free for you, and for me, it's immense support to continue creating health content. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. All right, let's continue. The largest and most important study on this topic was conducted by Harvard University. They followed nearly 32,000 men for 18 years, and what did they find? Something surprising. Those men who reported ejaculating 21 times or more per month had up to a 33% lower risk of developing prostate cancer compared to those who ejaculated four to seven times per month. And a key fact, 
The study concluded that it didn't matter how ejaculation was achieved. It was equally effective whether it was with a partner or through masturbation. The protective effect seemed to be linked to the physical act of ejaculation itself, not the sexual activity. Other studies have replicated these findings. A work in 2017 and a large meta-analysis in 2018 confirmed this inverse association, meaning higher frequency, lower risk. Now, as a scientist, I must be honest, these are observational studies and are based on what men remember and report, which can have errors. But the consistency of the results is so strong that it forces us to ask, why does this happen? So, what is the secret mechanism behind this possible protection? There isn't one single answer. But the scientific community is considering several fascinating hypotheses. The first and most intuitive is the flushing hypothesis. Think of the prostate as a sponge with small ducts. Over time, potentially harmful substances, carcinogens from the environment or tobacco, can accumulate in the prostatic fluid. Each ejaculation acts like a cleansing, a rinse that expels these substances before they have time to damage the cells. If ejaculation doesn't occur frequently, these toxins remain in contact with the prostatic tissue longer, increasing the likelihood of mutations that lead to a tumor. The second theory has to do with hormones. Frequent ejaculation could help maintain a healthier hormonal balance within the prostate, regulating levels of testosterone and other androgens, which in turn would control excessive cell growth. A third idea that I find very interesting is that sexual activity acts similarly to physical exercise. It stimulates the immune system, which is our defense army, not only against viruses, but also against cancerous cells. An active immune system is more effective at detecting and eliminating abnormal cells before they become a problem. Finally, it is believed that muscle contractions during orgasm improve blood flow, reduce local inflammation, and decrease oxidative stress, a key factor in aging and cancer development. After hearing all this, the million dollar question is, doctor, so how many times do I need to ejaculate per month? I wanna be very clear on this point. Although the study mentions 21 times, that number is not a medical prescription. It's not a goal you should force yourself to meet. Sexual health is not a competition. The ideal frequency for each man is completely personal and depends on many factors. Your age, your general health status, whether you have a partner or not, your stress level, your mood, the list is endless. Forcing yourself to reach a specific number can generate anxiety and stress which is counterproductive to health. What these studies suggest is not an obligation, but a concept. A sexually active life and a regular ejaculation frequency seem to be components of a healthy lifestyle that protects the prostate. The key is to listen to your body and find your own rhythm without pressure or guilt. And now I'd like to hear from you. What do you think about this? Do you believe there's a normal number or is it something totally personal? Leave your opinion in the comments. I'm very interested in reading different perspectives. And while you're doing that, don't forget to drink a glass of water, which is also very important for your health. All right, now let us touch upon a crucial topic that concerns many men. What happens to my ejaculation if I have prostate surgery? Here, get. It is fundamental to differentiate between the two main types of surgery because their consequences are radically different. First, Let's talk about surgery for benign enlargement or benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is the most common operation. Over the years, the prostate grows and can squeeze the urethra, making urination difficult. The surgery aims to unblock the pipe by removing the internal tissue that causes the obstruction, but leaving the prostate's outer capsule. The most common consequence of this surgery is retrograde ejaculation, what does this mean? It means that during orgasm, semen, instead of being expelled outwards, goes backwards into the bladder. Oh, this happens because the small valve, the internal sphincter that normally closes to prevent this, is altered during surgery. It's very important that you know this. You will continue to have orgasms. The sensation of pleasure will be the same, 
and erections should not be affected. You simply won't see semen come out. This semen is then harmlessly eliminated with urine. It is my duty as a doctor to always explain this before surgery, so that the patient does not get scared or frustrated afterwards. The second case is very different. Prostate cancer surgery, called radical prostatectomy. Here, the goal is to cure the cancer. And for that, the prostate is completely removed, along with the seminal vesicles. By removing these organs, semen production disappears. Therefore, after this surgery, there is no ejaculation. Orgasm can still be felt, known as a dry orgasm, but there will be no expulsion of fluid. Furthermore, this surgery is more complex and has two important risks, urinary incontinence and erectile dysfunction. Since the nerves responsible for erection pass very close to the prostate and can be damaged. Fortunately, with modern techniques like robotic surgery, it can sometimes preserve these nerves and greatly improve outcomes. After everything we've discussed, I want you to take away a clear and powerful idea. There is no magic formula to prevent prostate cancer, no miraculous diet, no secret supplement, and no magic number of ejaculations. The most important tool you have is prevention through medical checkups, having your annual checkups with the urologist, measuring your PSA prostate-specific antigen, and performing a digital rectal exam when your doctor indicates it is what can truly save your life because it allows for early detection of any problems. That said, maintaining a regular ejaculation frequency seems to be beneficial, but view it as just one piece of a large puzzle. What are the other pieces that have been scientifically proven to be crucial? Don't smoke, maintain a healthy weight, eat a balanced diet with more vegetables and fewer processed products, and above all, move. Sedentary living is one of the greatest enemies of your prostate and overall health. Be very careful with internet charlatans who promise miraculous cures. But health is a serious matter. If you want to know more about how to start your checkups or what PSA results truly mean, I recommend seeking reliable information from medical sources. Thank you immensely for accompanying me this far, for your time and your trust. If this video has been useful to you, if it has clarified your doubts, the best way to support me is by leaving a like, sharing it with a friend or family member, and subscribing to the channel. Your support allows me to continue creating honest, science-based health content for more people to take control of their health. Until next time,